Hi, I'm Sango and today we'll be modeling our first wearable. We'll be learning mesh manipulation and a few modifiers. I like to use keyboard shortcuts rather than the side menu so I'll let you know what I'm doing as I go along. And I also have my key presses cast to the bottom corner of the screen so in case I forget to mention anything you'll still be able to see what I'm pressing. So to get start started, open up Blender, new project and delete just the camera and the light this time. Before we start modeling, we're going to need some reference. So that could be a concept design that your artist or you create or it could be a selection of images that you like the kind of general idea from. So you can be picking bits and parts from each shoe to create your own and then you've still got the same overall ideas that people recognize as a shoe design is still within that. So it's going to look all coherent. To start using uh, reference images or concept art, what you have to do is go to edit, preferences, add-ons and type in image in the, sh in the search. Here you'd see import, export, import images as plain. So you want to make sure that's checked. Once you've got that, you can then go file, import, and you'll see images of planes here. So click that. Navigate to where your concept or reference images are. And select that. So you're going to align it with your viewport. So you're going to rotate on the Y axis. Oop, wrong button. Rotate on the Y axis 90. Scale that up to see if it's the right way around. And then rotate on the X. 90 as well. So there we have our reference image set up. So what we can do now is grab it, pull it along on the x-axis just so it's a bit, bit further behind. And then if you go up here on the right hand side, click this filter button and then click this arrow pointer here. And then if we press that on our reference image, we can never accidentally click it and move it or get it out of position now. So now we'll only be able to select our cube. So to start with, we just got to get this square into the, the basic shape of a shoe and then just keep going in, adding more, more detail to get it more, more better refined. So right now, oh, can click this toggle x-ray mode so we can select the what the back uh, the back facing vertices as well as the ones on the front and let's go I like to make the first um, block out line up with the top of the sole and just be the top of the foot and then I'll extrude to get the the sole in later and I'll show you how that looks So control R to make the loop cuts in your square to add more faces in there. And then you can just select the edge and press E to extrude to bring out more faces if you may need to. No control R there. And now it's just a scale along the Y axis. So if you press S to scale and then Y it locks it in on a certain on well the Y axis in that case. So you press X will lock on the X and Z to lock it on the Z axis. And I press one to go back into the vertex select mode. Select them, extrude it some more. There's a top top part blocked up. I can extrude here to get the, the tongue coming. Oops. 
So yeah, I don't want these vertices, so I'm going to select that, select the other one, and then you can press M at last, and that merges them together at the last one you selected. As you can see here, mine has a 6 next to it because I assigned it to a shortcut. So you can right click that and then um, add it to a shortcut. So assign shortcut, yours say if you've not got one already. And then you can just press a button and then it's going to be assigned to that key. So I've assigned mine to 6 so I can just press 6 to quickly do that. Sweet, so now I'm going to come onto the side view. Obviously we've not got any reference for this side view. Um, Shoes aren't too hard to do though, so just got to round off the edges. I'm sure everyone knows what a shoe kind of looks like. So you can just scale them on in on the X. We can press O, and that's uh, going to engage the proportional editing tool. With that, if you just scroll the wheel, then you're going to change the size that it's going to be affecting. So here if you select one of the vertices and then select another one at the end of the line whilst holding control it's going to select all the vertices between there. That's the same if you're on edge select or face select either way it will select uh, the whole line between the two selection points. Very handy technique to be using. And here if you hold alt and then select that's going to select the entire loop around the model. So I got that, scale that in a bit more to help with the curvature of the shoe. And then we need to work on the curvature at the back as well. So we're going to bring that in a little bit. And then keep working to get that, that shoe shape. It looks a bit boat-like at the minute. So once I've got the back, get that, the bridge of the foot in there. And then it starts shaping up a lot better. Right, now I'm going to bring this ankle part back up. So I'm going to select these vertices here. And I'm going to extrude that up. Um, turn off proportional editing and then place them in, in the right place. And there we go. Shape that up a little bit, make it more correct. Now that seems like we've got about the right shape for the top part of the shoe. So let's move on to the bottom. So we're going to select all the bottom vertices to get this sole bought out. So we're going to select them. And then extrude down. And then scale them out a bit. And then extrude down again. And then one more extrusion and then scale it in a little bit. And pull it down. And one last extrusion for that bottom, bottom part. You can pull that in a little bit. And as you can see here, it's a bit of a platform shoe. That's not what our reference was uh, telling us to build. So as you can see on the reference, it's uh, smaller at the beginning, or well, thinner at the beginning, at the front than it is at the back. So we're going to make that true on our model as well. So we're going to bring in proportional editing again and just scale up that front part to make it a bit thinner. So now you just got to add in the curvature for this part. So you can just select the this vertice here and then hold control, select this one up here. 
G to grab it and just I'm going to turn off the proportional editing tool and then press G again pull that up a little bit and then bring these ones down so hold control to select all that control and then bring that down just to add in more of natural curvature around the top of it so yeah I'm pretty happy with that right now if you go up here press this drop down arrow and the overlays and then click statistics and you're going to see how many triangles you got obviously this is just one shoe so it's going to be mirrored over so you got to make sure you're not going over 750 triangles per shoe so the combination of the two won't exceed 1500 triangles which is our limit for the shoes so that's how to model a shoe and I'll catch you on the next one